What is going on guys? We are getting closer and closer to actually having Surface Duo 2 in our very hands in the flesh. And one of the things that I am most excited to get to test out will be the brand new camera system present on Surface Duo 2. No longer will we be trying to take photos of the world using what is essentially a single selfie camera that we are flipping around to point out at the world and trying to edit these photos in Snapseed and trying to make them look as good as we can so that when we post them on Instagram, no one asks us why we're using a phone from eight years ago. With Surface Duo 2, we are going to be finally getting a full triple camera setup. Now, you may hate the camera bump, whatever. I get the complaints that I've heard about the, the appearance of it and so forth. But I am really excited to have a proper camera setup. As someone who has been daily driving a Galaxy Z Fold 2 for the last several months, I'm used to once again having a pretty good camera in my pocket all the time. I'm used to having a standard, an ultra wide, and a telephoto. And luckily, with Surface Duo 2, that is exactly what we're going to be getting here. You can see, you know, maybe they took some inspiration from the Z Fold 9. It's definitely possible. And what we're going to be getting here is a 12 megapixel standard wide angle camera, a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a two times telephoto lens at 12 megapixels as well and in this video we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive here as deep a dive as we can do really considering we don't actually have the hardware in our hands we're going to look at this hardware how does it compare what information we have to other cameras what does the software look like on surface duo 2 and in general what might we expect reasonably out of surface duo 2's photography the camera performance on this device. So the first thing we have to do is let's take a bit closer look at the cameras on Surface Duo 2. We are on GSM Arena right now. They're a great website. They get a lot of really good information here. And this is the section here that we are looking at in particular, the main camera. So like I said, 12 megapixel wide angle lens. Now there's a few things to notice here that it's an f 1.7. Now that's talking about the aperture and basically a lower number. So F whatever that number, the lower it gets, the more, the bigger, the wider, the aperture of that camera, which allows more light in, which is usually always a good thing with photography, but it also creates more natural bokeh. So you'll notice on a picture like this, which was taken with my Z Fold, obviously I'm in very close, so this is a much exaggerated sort of version of this, but you can see this is not portrait mode. This is just a macro kind of shot. I'm zoomed in, I'm using uh, manual focus, but you can see how blurred out that background is. And when you're taking like a portrait or things like that, most portrait photographers, use a lens that's like an f1.4 or something like that the lower the more that background is blurred out just like the human eye right if i look at my hand and i focus here at my hand everything behind my hand is out of focus that's how the human eye works as well and so people naturally seem to like pictures where the background is softly blurred out and with an f1.7 that's pretty good let's look at the z fold 3 here for comparison and the Z Fold 3 is actually an f1.8, so the Surface Duo's camera might actually do a better job of natural bokeh than the Z Fold 3. Again, we are speculating here. We're going basically just off the raw numbers, but that's what we know about, you know, the aperture. Let's jump back over here and see what else we have. They are 1.4 micrometer pixels. Those are relatively large, but nothing crazy to compare again with the Z Fold that has 1.8 micrometer or micrometer. I don't know what the right way to pronounce that is. We're just going to stick with micrometer. 1.8 micrometer pixels. So the Z Fold 3 has larger pixels, but a smaller aperture. How is that going to trade off? So a bigger pixel can absorb more light. So we're dealing with light absorption either way. I think it's going to be close. I think that on paper, Duo 2's camera is holding its own dual pixel. PDAF is phase detection autofocus. Duo 2 has PDAF phase detection autofocus. And OIS stands for optical image stabilization. They both do have that. So when we're looking at just the primary 12 megapixel lens, guess what? They're pretty similar. You're going to get a similar experience on paper out of these lenses. Let's go to the telephoto. So with the telephoto, 
you have a 12 megapixel f 2.4 with one micrometer pixels so with a telephoto lens you typically don't want blurry backgrounds really right you want it to be you know pretty much in focus and it actually narrows the field of view quite a bit as well and then if you're going to take uh, portrait photos with it they'll use software to blur out the background with the z fold 3 you're going to see something kind of similar f 2.4 one micrometer, micrometer, <laughs> pixels, PDAF, OIS, 2X, very, very similar telephoto. And honestly, the telephoto on the Z Fold series is pretty good. Here's a picture I took the other day with that telephoto lens, and this is on my Z Fold 2, but it's the same setup. Nothing really going to change there from 2 to 3. So you can expect similar performance. Now again, software plays a huge role in this, but at least from the hardware side, they look pretty similar. And let's go to the uh, ultra wide. So on the Duo 2, you get a 16 megapixel 2.4 aperture f2.4, 13 millimeter. It's an ultra wide, like I said, one micrometer. I've changed my pronunciation again. Uh, pixels there. On the uh, Z Fold 3, you've got a 12 megapixel. So the Duo is actually higher resolution. You've got the same aperture. And you've got, again, slightly smaller pixels on this one so the ultra wide on the z fold is uh lower resolution but larger pixels so how is that trade-off going to look on duo i think again on paper we're within punching range of the z fold 3. now we've also got a time of flight sensor on the duo as well so that's going to help with portraits and things like that it's a sensor to determine how far away things are so it sends out a a laser Laser bounces off, comes back. How long was that time of flight? How long did it take to bounce and come back? That helps it determine depth, helps it with portrait mode. So maybe portrait mode on Duo 2 will be a little bit better than it is on the Z Fold 3. Of course, it's capable of 4K 60, your typical sorts of uh, you know video modes. Of course, it does have HDR. However, on video, this uh, Duo 2 is stuck with HDR, whereas HDR 10 Plus is a thing on the Z Fold 3. But all in all, from a hardware alone perspective, it looks to me like Surface Duo 2 has ticked all the boxes that it needs to tick. I know we're not seeing, a, oh, it's a 48 megapixel, it's a 108 megapixel. That stuff really isn't all that important to me. The numbers I've talked about, like aperture, pixel size, sensor size, these things are really important. And I wish I could tell you the sensor size on Surface Duo 2, but unfortunately I can't. When we look at the Z Fold, you can see 1 over 1.76 inches, 1 over 3.6 inches that tells us the actual physical size of the sensor the bigger the better and we don't have this data with surface duo 2 we know that the pixel sizes are fine they're nothing to look at and go oh this is going to be a terrible camera but we don't have the sensor size to really be able to dig any deeper there however like i've already alluded to a couple times hardware is really important software is maybe just as important and luckily we do know that microsoft has actually outsourced some of their computational photography to a company that's actually worked with several other companies on this exact same thing if you want to look into the company that they are apparently using for this computational photographical magic they're called morpho m-o-r-p-h Oh, and like I said, this is a company that's, that's had their hands in this sort of thing in a lot of different places. They processed a lot of images. So basically, when you snap a picture with your phone, you don't just get the image. Software actually goes through and applies all sorts of magic to sharpen things up, adjust the contrast, the colors, all these sorts of things. This stuff became really in vogue with the Google Pixel phones, and it's actually extremely important now. It's something that everyone does. Apple's do everyone's doing computational photography. And Microsoft has rebuilt their camera app from the ground up to be a far better experience and to process images in a much more aggressive and much more competitive way when compared to other smartphones, other flagships on the market and i think that when you look at some of the stuff that they're talking about here i think there's some really good stuff in this camera app this thing looks like a proper modern camera app right you've got your different um lenses selectable there you've got your different modes down here portraits slow-mo all sorts of these things like that and i personally love the idea of being able to snap a picture on this screen what a beautiful landscape that is probably in california and then to be able to see the images that you've taken on the left screen, because I'm one of those people that I'll take multiple pictures when I'm doing something macro in particular, because you never know if you got that focus quite there or not. Being able to just see the picture I just took on a big screen next to the other big screen. 
I think that's fantastic. And I think that this is a place where Surface Duo can really make a name for itself, right? Because what's the point of Surface Duo? It's to have two screens. It's to be able to use a dual monitor setup on the go. And I know a lot of people are upset because they're like, I don't want to take a picture of holding it in book mode. That seems awkward. To me, let's spin this another way. The whole point of Surface Duo is book mode. Phone mode is like a thing you might use if you have to, but Microsoft wants you to use two screens most of the time. So let's change our thinking here, right? What does a dual screen photography setup look like? What should it look like? And to me, it should look a bit like this. I love the idea of this kind of setup. I love the idea of taking your expectations of a mobile photography setup and saying, that's how everyone else does it. Let's see how Surface Duo does it. Let's see how Microsoft does it. And they're going to do it radically different. So yeah, I know this is better to be able to oh, it's small and it's whatever. This is not what you're going to get on Surface Duo because on Surface Duo, you're going to get an entirely different, entirely new mobile photography setup. And if you like that, like me, you're excited. I get it. If you don't like it, you want something more traditional. Maybe I'm missing something here. I'd love to know. I've already put this in a, in a community post. People have a problem with taking photos in this posture. I don't understand why. I think it might be really good. So let me know in the comments or on that community post. What am I missing here? Now, we also have something else that's really cool to me as well. Once you're done taking your picture, you can edit it on Surface Duo where you've got your full screen picture here and you've got your editing sliders on another screen, not occluding, not shrinking the picture down to make room for those sliders like you have on every device. And again, I think this is what's important to keep in mind here. Take your expectations and throw them away. Consider what it might be like to do this with two screens. That's the point the point of Surface Duo. Take a situation you've already gotten used to, like photography, and think what would it be like on a dual screen device. Let's reimagine these things. So guys, that's what I think we can kind of glean from the data that we have in front of us about the photography experience on Surface Duo 2. Obviously, the experience on Duo 1 was really bad. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it was not exactly that. Now, like I've said in the past, was the original Surface Duo good enough for Instagram, for Facebook, for Twitter? Yeah, probably. But was it good enough for someone like me who loves taking pictures, who loves, I fancy myself an amateur mobile photographer? No, it, it absolutely was not. And for me, the fact that we've got a proper camera set up first off, I'm stoked. The fact that they're focusing on the photography on Surface Duo. They spent a good long while on it in their announcement. They talked about photography quite a bit. They actually showed off sample pictures. That's crazy to me considering how much of an afterthought photography was on the original Duo. The fact that we're not going to have to be dealing with opening the thing up and flippy flopping it around trying to make sure oh, it switch it switch sides on me again. Oh, missed my shot. Oh, the shutter lagged. If those things, I mean, look, most of that stuff has to be gone because the camera's on the backside, so you don't have to worry about that stuff. If the shutter lag is gone, if the HDR is good, it might be really good. I'm really excited to see what photography looks like on Surface Duo. Obviously, we have to, you know, we can't review this thing yet. We don't have it. We can't possibly do that. But that is my preview about everything we can glean from the data we have. This is my best guesses about what photography will be like on Surface Duo 2. Please let me know what you think about all this in the comments down below. Thanks as always for making it to the end of today's video. If you want to support the channel, click that join button down below. Stay tuned for more coverage just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.